Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. The end of the weekend is upon us. It is the Earth Master out here about 7 p.m. That's California time, 9 p.m. here where I'm at in Oklahoma, covering some storms out here in the last couple days, and we'll continue to do so for this week. There's a lot of severe weather coming up here. We'll check this out in just a minute. Uh, it is April 27, 2025. Latest activity shows a 1.0 there across California. As uh, far as a larger scale movement, uh, so far throughout the world today, a pair of earthquakes down here across the Philippines area with a 5.5 and a 5.6 striking out here earlier this morning. Also some deeper activity down south here across the Tonga Trench. That one, uh, a 4.6 at 333 miles deep. Still watching the area of New Zealand quite closely here because of the uh, ongoing movement north and well south here of this plate boundary that New Zealand sits on. So eventually this is going to move. Uh, last night, well, yeah, this is late last night, 4.1, really deep underneath the New Zealand area, struck uh, 148 miles deep there. So that's obviously adding some strain here against the Hikurangi subduction zone. So watch that closely. Uh, and of course, the uh, area across the South Island region is primed for some larger earthquake activity as well. Uh, California region, a handful of earthquakes up here above the 2.5 level as we zoom in. And look at the uh, latest quake, a 3.1 here across Petrolia, just shy of the Cascadia Mega Thrust area. Very shallow earthquake. Uh, there was a number of tremors up here today. Um, that's not volcanic tremor, but tremor activity that occurs down into the deeper areas of the subduction zone called the Cascadia. And uh, lately, when things kick up here in terms of tremor activity, we notice strain events happening as far as earthquake activity upstream. That makes sense, right? Because we're trying to, uh, well, I'm not trying to, but the plate here, the Juan de Fuca plate, is slowly being shoved underneath the area to the east of the North American plate here. And that's uh, tremor activity is being picked up by very sensitive equipment. That's what's happening here today, resulting in some earthquake activity here, just uh, mainly down here across the southern end. But it is starting to show uh, with a handful of earthquakes out here. So keep an eye on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, about 220 or 272 epicenters of tremor there across the area of the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So, of course, this area is very capable of producing a partial rupture up to about an 8.4, 8.5 earthquake. And we get these partial ruptures in between big events. The big event, of course, last time 1700, 9.0 at least. Uh, struck out here along the entire length of the Cascadia, which extends north from Northern California all the way up here past the Vancouver Island ranges. Uh, so when that happens there, obviously we get a much bigger earthquake. But in between main events, occasionally we see these partial ruptures, so we'll watch that closely. As uh, far as the rest of California goes, nothing above 2.5, all smaller microquakes out here. Uh, nothing around the Bay Area, pretty quiet out there for now. Um, as far as any unusual activity here in Southern California, not seeing it. It's just your typical microquake movement there across various faults there in Southern California. Uh, for the uh, Texas area, it was just down here. I've been driving all over the place. I drove from southeastern Oklahoma this morning all the way over here to the Permian Basin. Uh, the severe weather, we'll talk about that here in a minute, but it was capped out here, meaning that the severe thunderstorms did not initiate uh, because of that capping layer. Um, but yeah, needless to say, been driving all day. Some earthquake activity down there across the area of the oil fields. Nothing big. Um, some movement way up north. This little odd earthquake up in the South Dakota area. A little 2.6 from this morning. New Madrid seismic zone is quiet for now. And really nothing uh, happening there across the eastern portion of the country. As uh, far as the movement around the Puerto Rico trench area, still got a handful of earthquakes out here, including the latest over across the uh, Barbados area, 4.3 just outside of Bridgetown. So continue to keep an eye here on the Caribbean plate. It's been quite active out here in the last couple days. Uh, let's see what we've got for a total tally of earthquakes here in this area. About 101 earthquakes. Uh, mostly uh, a lot of threes, a lot of twos out there. I don't believe they show the smaller quakes out here as far as microquakes. Um, no, well, maybe one or two, but... Uh, that's a lot of earthquake activity there around the Puerto Rico Trench lately. Uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, mainly keep an eye here on the Mariotos Trough. It's a, a little subduction zone there that the Puerto Rico area sits on. 
You can see it quite nicely here on the oceanic crest view. Uh, anywhere in this area is capable of some big, big uh, earthquake activity, along with the subduction zone here across this region of the uh, eastern side of the Caribbean plate. A lot of earthquake activity stirring up there, so watch for some further movement in that region. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot happening out there for now. Uh, down in South America, uh, latest quake shows a 4.3 there outside of the uh, Argentina region. This one pretty deep, though, 107 miles deep into the Peru Chile Trench at, uh, outside of Santi uh, Santiago, Chile, but well underneath this area of the uh, San Rafael, Argentina region. Uh, Alaska area, still seeing a number of earthquakes up here. This has been one region that's been popping left and right uh, with earthquake activity. Got a little swarm of uh, some moderate quakes there across this area of the Aleutian Trench uh, and a number of other earthquakes out here. Looks like this area does want to move a little bit. Uh, so we'll keep an eye here on the northern rim here of the Pacific Plate. That's a subduction zone called the Aleutian Trench. And uh, it's definitely quite active right now. Uh, across the rest of the globe here, just some minimal earthquake activity. Uh, I don't quite have the Earthquake 3D globe on all the quakes right now. I still have to update this version on my laptop at home. Yes, I have the uh, <clears throat> EMSC and also the USGS on the globe. But uh, for now, I just have to use the uh, USGS until I can find a fix for this. But uh, yeah, so overall, a... Uh, Somewhat of a minor day. Let's see what we got for the largest magnitude here in the last 24 hours. That's going to go to that 5.6 there in the Philippines. Been quite active down south here and across this entire area. No big earthquakes yet, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, as far as space weather activity goes, let's go ahead and check this out real quick. Um, looks like maybe we're recovering from that flatline event there over the past couple days. Right, a little bit of uh, flaring going on. Nothing big. Some sea flare activity, it looks like. Um, let's see where that is coming from. I know we're not, not really expecting anything major uh, for now. Let's see what we got. Um, maybe this area up here showing a little bit of complexity, some magnetic lines there. Uh, but also across the eastern limb, way on the far side. Uh, we do have a number of sunspots that looks like they're about ready to come around uh, the eastern limb there. So we'll watch for that in the days ahead. Not quite visible here yet, but they're just maybe back over here a little bit. Uh, it looks like there's some more active regions that uh, hopefully will bring us some solar flares here in the days ahead. Once it gets over here across the earth facing side of the sun. But for now, uh, the majority of these sunspots are pretty quiet. Not a whole lot expected at all. As uh, far as solar flaring goes, 1% uh, chance or less. Look at that M flare at 10%. That is crazy. Uh, even C flare is dropping. That uh, is uh, almost like solar minimum. So not a whole lot of uh, hope there for some uh, flaring activity. No major auroras in the forecast either. Look at that. Pretty quiet conditions prevailing. So far as the Storm Prediction Center goes today, I just was looking on social media here of a huge tornado up in the uh, central Nebraska area up here. I don't remember exactly the name of the town, but I heard it's a huge mile-wide wedge uh, that was ongoing there for uh, at least an hour on the ground. Luckily, this is a low population area. Um, down south here in this area of Texas where I was at today, I was covering uh, this pretty much this entire panhandle of Texas all the way down to the... Um, um, Ooh, just outside of Lubbock. And there was a couple of thunderstorms that fired up, but that was about it. I think one went severe after I left the area, but there was a huge cap in place here. And that prevents the uh, air. Um, it's basically a warmer air above the uh, surface air. A lot of warmer, moist air coming in. You put that warmer air on top of uh, the Gulf moisture, and it just it, it has a hard time there. The storms have a hard time firing up, and uh, more so remaining fired up so that cap came into effect here today tomorrow not so much i think uh tomorrow's gonna be a little bit different day with a more broad scale event little uncertain on if i want to go this far up north uh that's a good ooh, at least a seven hour drive for me um from this area in uh oklahoma where i'm at right now even just to get to kansas city missouri uh, so that would be in a few more hours to get up here to moderate risk. I don't think I'm going to drive that far. 
I'm probably going to uh, target this area down south here in Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, like I say, the cap conditions not expected tomorrow. And there is a decent tornado threat. The main area of concern, obviously, up there with a 15% hatched area. If things play out, it could be a tornado outbreak tomorrow. Uh, late afternoon, overnight hours, not the best time at all. Uh, that includes the uh, Minneapolis area, St. Paul. They are in the significant severe weather or significant severe tornado zone here in the 15%. And there's even a 10% hatched area uh, surrounding that. Um, further down the line here, there's going to be a um, pretty much a dry line that's going to stir up uh, uncapped. And uh, the 5% extends down in Oklahoma, 2% down into Texas. So anywhere out here, we could see some uh, tornado activity. But the most likely area is going to be up north. Uh, that's for Monday afternoon, Monday night. And there is some big-time wind threats as well uh, up there in the red zone. And even some large hail. That extends all the way down into Texas and the Oklahoma area there in the hatched area. So for us down here in the southern area of the severe weather, I think the main threat is going to be the large hail and of course more so up north here um, you know some of the wording in here is actually very very scary they're talking about a uh, very large hail that could be dvd size you know five inches plus <laughs> they do get that big i prefer not to see one um but yeah we're talking about a huge severe weather event tomorrow and um hopefully i'm hoping for the best that this will turn into a bust I don't want to see any damage out there. It will be entering into some highly populated areas here. And um, just, man, tomorrow's going to be one of those days you do not want to be caught off guard. Uh, if you're working late or if you're working afternoon, evening hours, just, you know, keep your weather radio on regardless if you're at work. Uh, that's a must. There has to be some type of notification getting to you if there is tornado warned storms in your area. Uh, so just a big deal, really big deal tomorrow. And day three here for Tuesday looks to be, uh, well, down here in my area once again. That's why I'm going to hang out down here on the southern end. If I decided to go up here uh, well north into the moderate zone for tomorrow, I would have to drive back down here another 10, 12-hour drive to cover it on Tuesday. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I'm going to be that guy covering some stuff down here. Um, it's it's a passion of mine, you know, aside from earthquake activity and uh, the YouTube channel is to uh, observe the weather. And while I'm out there, if I see severe weather, I report it to the National Weather Service wherever I'm located at. Um, I'm official Skywarn spotter, so I know um, how to be safe out there. And I also know how to report the severe weather conditions to the, uh, prop, uh, the you know, the proper um figures there which would be the national weather service and then from there they get the information out to the public so very important to have weather chasers or storm spotters on the ground um, to observe and report so that's what i'll be doing the next few days but of course i'll still be out here covering earthquake activity uh, but for the majority of the week here i'll be out uh, down south here so be, i think we're going to be pretty busy anyway um what else we got here folks i think that's about it um Good thing I turned off the secondary mic there. It was uh, it was kicking up an echo there a couple of videos back, but I think we're good now. Um, I'm trying to think. I think that's about it. Uh, go back over to the USGS map. Let's see if we got um, anything else going on before I end this video. I don't see anything new. Uh, California, just a little quiet, active up north, but... Uh, uh, we'll see what happens, right? We get these slow periods, and then they're followed up by a bunch of earthquake activity. It's not going to stay quiet for long. Have a good night, folks. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning before we head out for some uh, weather spotting. And um, I didn't get a chance to uh, do a live stream today while I was out because no storms formed. Um, it was just a, a crazy day. But for the people that live around here, that's probably a good thing because there could have been some uh, damaging hail and some tornadoes in this area had uh, some of those storms broken through the cap. Have a good night. Um, enjoy what's left of your weekend. We'll see you guys out here tomorrow morning uh, for the uh, Monday morning work week update. Have a good one.